It's a sight and smell that for Squamish roaster Tim Nutton is second to none. Coffee is this thing that, that we all drink all the time. Everybody consumes it on a daily basis. People know very little about it. There's so much to discover and there's so much to taste. So this is typically what you expect coffee to look like. Coffee grows as a cherry on a shrub, on a tree. And two of these beans together, that's one seed in one cherry. And then this decaf is quite different. This is from the decaffeination process. It causes the coffee to be brown. Like most people, this former safety consultant has always enjoyed a good cup of coffee. However, it wasn't until he traveled to Italy in his late teens that he began to appreciate and favor the country's more denser, generally stronger types of brews. A love that turns out girlfriend Emily also shared as well. It wasn't until I moved to Vancouver that I think I started paying attention to it a little bit more. Vancouver has such an amazing selection of really neat roasters. When you start to get more interesting flavors out of coffee, you just realize that there is a whole world in it. And so this past spring, the two started up Counterpart Coffee, where today they roast and ship around 200 pounds of coffee from Brazil, Ethiopia, Colombia, and more to all across Canada. With that process of turning seed into bean more scientific than you may think. Coffee is the most chemically complex food that we consume. So if your water is too hot, you might extract too much of the natural acidity that's in the coffee and, and make it unpleasant. If your water is too cold, it won't extract properly and it'll be under extracted. As part of this, Tim constantly adjusts and monitors his machine's heat, airflow, and insular drum speed to make sure he doesn't over or under roast the bean, sometimes doing it up to five times to achieve the perfect batch. From there, the beans are cooled down and scanned with Emily then dumping them into a deep stoner to suck up any random items still lurking in the batch. While they're collecting all the coffee to put it into the burlap bags to ship out, sometimes little rocks or pieces of concrete end up in the bags. So this is the collection that we've pulled out of the deep stoner. And that's when things get really noisy. In order to ensure quality and consistency among their products, Emily and Tim undergo a cupping practice that all roasters take part in, where they methodically smell and taste each of the sample brews they receive before ordering a full bag. We're slurping it in, in a way to sort of um, spray it throughout the inside of the entire inside of our mouths, really sort of coat your mouth. Because coffee is an agricultural product, it changes from season to season. And so the crop from one farm uh, this year will taste different from how it tasted last year and it tastes different from how it's going to taste next year. With orders only continuing to grow, the hope is to offer roasting and tasting workshops in the near future to further open up drinkers' eyes and palates to the Java world. And while being able to drink coffee all day doesn't sound so bad, for this young couple, it's being able to turn a shared love of coffee into a full-time company that's been the biggest joy, or shall we say perk. It's kind of a really neat blend of science and art. It's been really exciting. It's really exciting to see how it's grown. There's a growing taste for better and better coffee in Squamish.